So as we go into magnetism, this is the same thing as right here. Uh, that magic thing where two stuff and things stick together. I got my little uh, Lego piece. This is my nephews made this. They were using it for something. And they hooked a, taped a magnet to the bottom of it. All right, and then you can stick stuff on there. And then you can stick other things onto it. So um, magnetism is, right, it's this, uh, it actually comes from the, uh, there's a island in Greece um, that's, uh, it has these rocks. The island's name is Magnesia. Um, rocks from that would attract and repel each other. Those are called, uh, the things that are from Magnesia are magnets. Um, Magnesia also, by the way, made a white powder. It had some, um, it, I, some sort of uh, base, I might have been calcium carbonate or something like that, um, where they would mix it with water and a little bit of other things. And this white uh, um, milky substance would help settle your stomach. Uh, it was called the milk of magnesia, which is a uh, kind of a competition again. Uh, it competes against Pepto-Bismol to help settle your stomach. Um, and then I think that's the reason why Pepto-Bismol is pink because they separate it from the milk of magnesium. All right. Yeah, and you also know magnets from uh, your compasses. I've got a couple of these. These are really helpful in uh, trying to set this up and figure out which way is north. All right, you can see if my stuff is west. They don't, these don't work terribly well. Uh, here's my, oh, good. Uh, okay, so that says, yeah, that arrow set up. Something's not right. Uh, there must be some other things floating around. Uh, magnets, right? You can see that they're holding, right? They were holding things up. They apply a force. We kind of exist in field theory. So, right, they feel an object feels a force in this magnetic field. So, that is the, uh, right? Uh, The symbol for the magnetic is B, and it is a vector field. All right. So um, you'll often hear this called the B field. Um, you have the electric field, which is the E field. Magnetic fields are the B field. All right. And so which you'll notice that it didn't say, it didn't approach this the same as charges, where we talk about the thing that creates the charge. Right? What is charge? Charge is a thing, right? And now there's a field that exerts that force. Now we're really just talking about that force because I'm going to walk I'm kind of back into what creates it. So there is this thing that's a magnetic field. There is a field that is coming off of this right, that, that a, a applies a force onto an object. So I can see if I can make this thing. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Wow. I can make it. Spin around. Um, there's the magnetic field. So as we, here's my field. I'm going to make it point this way right now. What direction does a field point? Because remember, this is a vector field. So it has magnitude and direction. And we remember that forces are caused by a field right, times some stuff. So if I wanted to, I could say the magnetic force is the magnetic field times magnetic stuff, which would make sense. Right? And this is how really it started out a long time ago. But as we went to try to find this magnetic stuff, we never found it, right? So after a while, if you're looking for something and it's not there, maybe it doesn't exist. So um, that brings us to, 
I'm going to kind of come around. Am I going to come back around to this if I feel field time stuff? Just to kind of give you a little remembrance, the electric field or the electric force is the electric field times electric stuff. The gravitational force is the gravitational field times gravitational stuff. All right, so now, uh, what direction does the gravitational field point? It points in the direction that mass is pushed. What direction does the electric field point? It points in the direction that a positive charge is pushed. Which way does the field point? Well, this comes from old. The only things that we really knew could have uh, feel electric forces for light or magnetic forces for a th couple thousand years uh, were compasses. And compasses would tell you which way we're north. So the field points. the north pole of a mag of a compass points meaning here's my compass if i were to put this compass in this field this would spin around such that the north pole would point that way let me say that again. The magnetic field points in the direction a North Pole would point if I put it in that field. It's kind of the force on a compass. It's the force on the north end of a compass if you put it in that field. Right? What direction? A charge would get pushed, what direction mass would get pushed, what direction the north pole of a compass would get pushed. And you'll notice the push, then you'll notice that we're pretty kind of stuff because we've got a north and south pole on there. And we know that like pole, just kind of like charges, like poles repel, opposite poles attract, north to attract to south, south to attract to north, that kind of stuff. So, For a long time, so you have so the North Pole of a pump compass. So if I put my little compass in here, if I put my little bar magnet and let it sit in there, here's the north end, there's the south end. That's the direction it would point. That's how you know the direction of the magnetic field, by putting that compass in there and telling you which way it points or which way this rotates around. So if I had a North Pole that was this way, this end would feel a push that way, that end would feel a push that way, there'd be a magnetic force that way and a magnetic force that way. And this would twist around, it would feel a torque um, and twist around until it turned and went into that. So you say, Mr. Lubbs, well, if that feels a force that way and that feels a force that way, um, can't we just cut them? Sure. What happened we found out? That when we cut them, and I tried to get a south and a north, what ended up happening is you just got this. When you slice that magnet in half, you get two new magnets. You get a new sort, a new north and a new south. Uh, we currently are unable to figure out um, how to only have one pole. This is what's often called, uh, you know, if you're wandering in the um, esoteric portions of Wikipedia, the magnetic monopole. Um, it only has, uh, instead of one pole, it, uh, the, instead of having both at the same time, it has just one. Uh, our current understanding doesn't allow for magnetic monopoles. So there must be two at the same time. By and I don't think we'll ever find a magnetic monopole because uh, I just don't think that 
doesn't fit well. A lot of things would have to change in our understanding. Um, so it would be really interesting. But as we sit and where we are now, uh, the magnetic field um, just doesn't act that way. There is no real, this is not a, not a real thing. All right. The other thing that then begins to happen. So there's my field, it's drawn by that. So that means if I have a, uh, if I have my, if I have my magnet, here's my bar magnet. Here's my north end and here's my south end. That means if I take my little compass and I put it here, my little compass is going to point that way. It's going to be the north end and it's going to be the south end. So if I put it here, it's going to go that way. There's my north end, there's my south end. If I put it here, there's my north end, there's my south end, there's my direction. If I put it over here, Norths are applied to certain, same thing as charges, like poles, let me rip this down. Right. Like poles repel. Opposite poles attract. So if I put it here, that means north, south. I'm gonna stop drawing the north and south because I know the direction of the north by the arrowhead. So I put it here. The arrowhead's going to go there. We put it here. The arrowhead's going to go there. Right, that's why a lot of um, you can just kind of see this. I'm going to switch cameras here for a second. Right, as you look at this camera, right, oops, as it's out of focus, that's good stuff there, Mr. Lawrence. Right, it, it has an arrow. Right, this has an arrow. Why are they not pointing in the same direction? Right, there's a lot. There we go. Oh, I can't see it. Uh, a little bit. Come on. Nope, no, it's not going anywhere. That's good stuff. Uh, but that's the direction of the field of point. So let me just show you that. See if I can get this, get these two. Um, Oh, this is the reason they would point, right? So, oh, I don't think I. So which way is, oh. All right, I'm starting to get an idea of how this works. That's a weird, oh, it goes this way and that way. Interesting. Yeah, magnetic fields are a little bit on the weird side, all right? So you can see that I can get on the side. So if I put it over here, it's gonna go that way. If I put it over here, it's gonna go that way. If I put it over here, it's gonna go that way. And it's gonna go that way, and it goes that way, and it goes that way. But then if I put one here, the north side is gonna be attracted to the south side and point away, so it's gonna go this way. But over here, it's going to go this way. So it's going to come out and go back and come back and then go around. And then right, if I put one here, it's going to come out that way. You're going to kind of see that it, Looks a whole lot like a um, electric field. But remember what I said when I cut it in half and separated, I ended up with two magnets. So let's cut this one in half. And when I do that, this turns into a north side and this turns into a south side. So what happens is 
when I put my compass in here, it points away from that and towards that. From that and towards that and away from that and towards that. But what if I cut those in half too? Well, point that way. If I wanted to, I could probably connect this one together. I could connect this one together. I could connect that one together. And what you begin to see is that B field lines are closed loops. All right. They do not have a beginning and an end. Electric fields start on positive charges and end on negative charges. However, in a, in a magnetic field, they are a closed loop that goes all the way around, which means that it has no beginning um, and has no end. This is why I don't think we'll ever find a magnetic monopole short of finding um, um, some other things some other massive changes. All right, any questions on that before I erase it? All right, then. So what does that mean? Well, if we were gonna treat this like before, the, uh, you would put, uh, we put mass in a uh, gravitational field and did some kinematics with it. Uh, we put uh, charges in electric field and we did some kinematics with that. Or we could put some magnets in the magnetic fields and do some kinematics with that, but that's really not the interesting thing. Um, that's actually, I mean, this would be the same thing. I mean, just turn up the forces, looks pretty parallel. But we've, something else happened. Uh, I want to say this is Orsted. Um, for a long time, they were just novelties, really used to like stick things on other stuff, right? No. What is it? Uh, is it the insane con posse magnets? How do they work? Um, it was really the in the eighteen hundreds you get um, somebody who has a big lab and they're just playing around and they have stuff laying around. Uh, and they found that they are that charges feel a force from B fields. Uh, this was huge, by the way. Uh, big, big. You really cannot underestimate how big this rocks the field. This is this is discovery of the nucleus level stuff. This is um, photoelectric level stuff, uh, photoelectric effect stuff, like waves as a, as a... So let's, uh, charges feel a force from magnetic fields. So now you're like, oh my gosh, I think these two are related, right? So we know that they'll feel an electric field force. Now with the, so the, Magnetic force that is on a charge depends on a couple of different things. It makes a whole lot of sense uh, to, it depends on how much charge there is. More charge means more force. Oh, so it depends on how much. Uh, depends on the magnetic field strength. That makes sense. <clears throat> but then there was this nice, this interesting little thing. Uh, it really depended on the charge moving, the charged. Right? So it's not charges feel a force. Moving charges feel a force. Stationary charges don't feel a force from the magnetic field. So it must be 
moving. But now I have two vectors. I have a velocity and I have a gravitational field and I'm gonna multiply them together. And I have two ways to multiply them together. Uh, turns out it goes as the cross product. Q, V cross, and it's V cross B. So what does the cross product mean? Now we're gonna get into the right hand rule. So here we go. So I, on your sheet, let me set it down somewhere. I'm always setting it down. Should be V cross B and yeah, there it is. Magnetic force is Q V cross B. So let's set up a, uh, a magnetic field. Let's go back to my magnetic field. Uh, for those of you who don't remember the cross product, this is going to turn into Q, V, B, magnitude of V, magnitude of B, sine of the angle between V and B. So let's go back to our magnetic field. This is my B field. It points this way. Uh, let me put that right there. Let's put a charge in there. Uh, here's my Q. Uh, let's make it go this way. My positive Q is going to go that way. Right now, we're just going to look at my directions. Magnitude is easy. Plug in a number, plug in a number, plug in a number, plug in a number. Right? Wave your hands over the magic box. Right? Offer up some Offer up a sacrifice of some batteries and the magic box will return to you some numbers. But it is not going to tell you which way the direction goes. So uh, let's start with something. Here we go. So this is going to be, I'm going to have my charge moving this way uh, at some velocity V. Uh, let's give you some numbers just to make this easier. Q, I'm going to have five, plus five microcoulombs. Uh, velocity is uh, three times 10 to the sixth uh, meters per second, which is not bad. And then the B field strength, uh, I forgot to tell you what the uh, units were. Uh, B field strength, let's make this about, let's make this two. Uh, and then I need some units. And you can kind of figure out the units from over here. I'm going to solve for B. So B turns into being FB over QV sine theta. The sine theta, that is a Newton divided by a Coulomb. And that's a meter per second. And that's sine theta, which has no stars. So we have a Newton or Coulomb per second meter. Um, this is a monster mass because uh, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. This turns into a whole bunch of things. What's nice is this is the Tesla. <clears throat> so to Tesla, uh, there is an old unit that's called the Gauss. Uh, one Gauss is about 10 to the minus four Tesla. However, where is this from? Uh, you may have heard the Gauss before. You probably heard of Carl in your math class. Yeah, again, you're like, oh, but Newton's so high up there. Yeah, I mean, Carl Gauss. You, Dude's making strides all over the place. Math, physics. Uh, one Gauss is the Earth's B field at the surface. So your uh, this mag this magnet is sitting in a magnetic field of about one Gauss. So. 
That's about, so that's where it came from. So I got two Teslas. So we can figure out what the magnitude of the force is. That's super easy. I got what, five microcoulombs, five times 10 to the negative six QV is three times 10 to the sixth times two. All right, times the sine of the angle between them. That is 90 degrees. That force is 15 times two is 30 newtons. But now what direction does it go? That's the magnitude, which way is it getting pushed? So that brings us to the right hand rule. Um, this is, I guess I feel like I've seen that all the time. This is one of the most confusing things. This whole class is something like all the confusing things, but it's the fun stuff. All right, it is the cross product. So now we're going to use our right hand to figure out what the cross product is. Your index finger is Q. Right. So uh, if we could step back to what we did last semester, where we did A cross B. A, A is your index finger, B is your middle finger, and then your thumb is going to be the um, direction of the resultant. So, and it always wants, you know, you're always gonna go that way, you always go this way, you never go that way. Don't do that, you bend the middle finger. Right. Pew, pew, All right? I'm trying to like, mm, well, okay. Uh, so V is first, V is going this way. Now making that, right, cross down like that, that in the same, keeping my velocity in the same direction as my index finger, or keeping the index finger in the same direction as the velocity, I need to make my middle finger go in the direction of the magnetic field. The, mag the middle finger goes in the same direction as the magnetic field, MF, MF, middle finger, magnetic field middle finger, magnetic field. This way, that way. My thumb points into the board. Let me do that again. So here's my hand, points up. My middle finger, now so I'm gonna point that way. That means my thumb points into the board. So, into the board. How do I draw into the board? Uh, if this is confusing to you, you just say into the board and you don't draw it. However, there is a convention. So you have that way and you have that way. Now I wanna come out of the board. I draw a dot. X's go into the board. So the direction of the force is into the board. Into the board. So I'm going this way, V, cross B gives me the direction of the force. So that means if I have, this is a positive charge. So if I have a negative charge, negative charges go the opposite way. So if I have a negative charge and it's moving this way, V cross B, a positive charge will get pushed in. So a negative charge gets pushed out. So that's a dot. If it helps, take your pencil. All right. This pencil is pointing this way. Let's make it in the same direction as the B field. Look, now my direction points, now my pencil points in the direction of the B field. Now my direction points in the direction, now my pencil points in the direction of the velocity. Now, if I'm gonna point it towards the screen, you'll see that once I figure this out. When I point it at the screen, I end up with, 
a dot. Dot is this way. And if I want to, I can put a little X on the back. Oh, I think I might. Put an X on the back. Place yours already, right? If you need to mount, this is the way to do it. So now my X, oh, a little better. There's my X, it points this way. Now my pencil is pointing at me, there is an X on the back of that. Now there is a dot that I point at the screen. So that is, so we've got a couple different things. Number one, learning the right hand rule. Now you're in three dimensions. The magnetic force pushes perpendicular to the direction that the field points. It's also perpendicular to the direction that the velocity is going. It doesn't push in the direction of the field. It pushes magnets in the direction. It pushes compasses in the direction of the field. It pushes charges perpendicularly. So if I have a positive charge that's moving this way, same charge, same velocity, same field, you'll notice that the angle over here the angle between the field and the velocity here, my theta, is zero degrees. The sine of zero is zero. There is no force. When a charge is moving parallel to a magnetic field, there is no force on it. So next. Let's do one more thing here. Uh, I usually like having my magnetic fields blue because B is blue. So here's my magnetic field, but now my magnetic field is going to point. out of the board, right? These are dots, they're pulling out. How do you know how strong this field is? Uh, you either look at the number, but if I'm drawing it, remember strength is the distance between the field. So if I wanted to draw one that was a different strength down here, right, I could draw it like this, right? So this field, this region has a stronger field than this region. But I don't want to do that right now. That's more complicated than what it was. So let's send a charge in. Send a negative. Uh, I'll send a positive charge in. Plus Q coming in here at V. What direction? Direction. V cross B, right hand rule, index finger. V is going this way. Now I bend my middle finger, keeping my index finger straight. Don't do, right? What's going to happen is you're going to want to do this. Right? Nobody points. No, you point like this. I have not seen anybody point like this. Oh, I see. I better not point first. So it's V first. Which way is V going? And then now point your middle finger in the direction of the B field, right? This B field, middle finger, magnetic field, which way is it pointing? It's pointing. I have to rotate, I have to keep my index finger in the same direction as the velocity. Now I'm going to rotate my middle finger. So it points in the direction of the magnetic field. This magnetic field is pointing this way, excuse me, it's pointing out of the board. My thumb pushes down. So in my charge, it's going to feel a force that way. Wait, my force is perpendicular to my velocity. What else have I seen that before? Well, 
forces, some of the forces equal MA, that means I'm gonna accelerate this way. So if my acceleration is perpendicular to my velocity, that means my velocity is gonna change a little bit like that. So that means my new, right, as this moves forward a little bit, my new velocity is this way. I'm sorry, my new velocity is that way. V, V, so that way, now I'm tilting. Now my new force over here is this way. That means my velocity is that way, which means my new force is this way, which means my new velocity is that way, which means my new force is that way. It should look pretty similar When my accelerations and velocities are perpendicular, you're moving in a circle. Hey, look, that turns into, right, that's perpendicular. That's a centripetal acceleration. What's causing this? What are the sum of the forces? It's just the magnetic force. So the magnetic force right, becomes the centripetal acceleration, which becomes mv sub theta r. Now you can figure out what the radius of the curve is on there. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's take a quick little look here. I'm going to switch screens. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see if this works. And I want to where did my screen go? Something went terribly, terribly weird. Uh, move the pin. I want to share my screen. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So here's a charged particle in a magnetic field. Here's my magnetic field strength, and you can see as it increases and decreases. Yeah, definitely check this out, ophysics.com. Um, as I increase the strength, the dots get closer together. All right. And then I can increase my charge and I can make it have negative charges. I can make my speeds get slower and faster and I can change my masses, which is not very much mass, by the way. Uh, so let's have a nice, uh, what did I have? I had about here. I think I had, I can actually do this. What is I had? Five, I'm gonna, five times 10 to the sixth. No, I think it's five. Yeah, it's pretty slow. I had two Teslas and I had, I think I had five, five microcoulombs and I was moving at, uh, well, I can't do three meters per second, but I can do three. All right, here we go. Let's shoot this thing in there. Pew, see, there it goes. And there it makes the turn. And look, if I increase the field strength, and I shoot another one, it's starting to make, uh, oh, can I move this out? Oh, well. Now let me increase my field strength some more. What if I increase it some more? Uh, I want you to see that it's not gonna make a whole circle. It only makes a half a circle because as it comes in, then that radius is set. Uh, and then the circle becomes smaller and smaller. Let's change the charge. Now I have a negative charge. Oh, look at that. The force is in an opposite direction. I'm going to go faster. Uh, let's increase the mass. All right, I got the same force more mass, I'm gonna have less acceleration. So let's go back to my positive charge here in a second. Let's clear the trace. Uh, same kind of speed, I've got some magnet in there. Let's shoot that in there. Right. Notice that this is getting pushed down, all right? This is what's very cool. Q 
Here I have an electric field. This is going to be a little bit of review. You see the field points up. Uh, I'm going to shoot this positive charge. I've got plus five microcoulombs. It's uh, roughly about the same mass and roughly about the same speed. Let me double check that. Particle mass two times 10 to the minus 16th. I don't get that. Uh, so let's shoot that in there. There it goes. Oh, look. Let's go a little bit faster. When I push it, when I send it through an electric, this setup, <clears throat> I have an electric field pushing on the particle towards the top of the screen. The magnetic field in this orientation puts the mag pushes the charge down. So there for each setup, there exists a speed such that the magnetic force is equal and opposite to the electric force and the object, the charged particle will go through undeflected. All right. Uh, before I leave this, I want you to see that if I make this a negative, it turns into X's. See the X's means it's pointing into the screen. Now I'm pointing out of the screen, into the screen. And now it's gonna go the opposite direction because the field points in the opposite direction. Let's go back to that velocity selector. I think I had an electric field pointing this way. There's my electric field. Uh, my B field is pointing, it's pointing this way. Uh, and you see that they are perpendicular to the page. B field is out of the page. So a positive charge, when it comes into here, is going to feel an electric force up because that's which way the electric field points. The magnetic force, all right, it's V, B is out. So it's going to feel a magnetic force down. And so then the electric force only depends on the electric field and the charge. The magnetic force is QVB. The sine theta is already set up. Charge can't be changed. VB can't be changed, but I can adjust the velocities that are coming through there. So what speed are these forces equal? So that means the sum of those forces equal MA. I don't want any acceleration. So I've got the electric force. No, we'll make this is the positive. The electric force minus the magnetic force equals zero. FE equals FB. FE is going to be E. Q, FB is Q, V, B. Oh, look at that. The charge doesn't matter. And the speed that you need to go there through there is simply the ratio of the electric and the magnetic fields. This is a huge deal, by the way. All right. So now anything that comes out of here is at a certain speed. Super nice, regardless of how much charge it has and really regardless of how much mass it has. The mass doesn't even play Mass, mass doesn't even care. All right. So what you do is on the back side, you just make a nice little hole. So where the objects come in, 
That means only things on this line are going to come through. If it gets deflected at all, right? If it's too slow, it's going to go up. That means there's not enough magnetic force. If it comes in too fast, it's going to go down. It's got too much too much magnetic force. All right, and finally, so that's the velocity selector. And then last thing, and then we'll take a break. That's the charge on one, um, one charge. So uh, let's move the into the plane. Right, so let's here's, here's my new let's send some charges in. Oh negative charge I'm like I have a positive charge. There's a positive charge moving in there. It's gonna get pushed. Right, we know it's gonna get pushed that way. Well let's send a bunch of positive charges in all in a row. And so they're all moved this way. I have a line of charge now. And they're all going to want to go in that circle. So if there was some way I could contain them all, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them all in. I'm going to contain them in a conductor. All right. And then surround it by an insulator. All right. Uh, the conductor that I'm going to use is copper. Uh, the insulator that I'm going to use is air. The word for this, right? is a wire. So what is the, now instead of the force on the charge, now what is the magnetic force on a wire? Well, that's actually super simple. Remember this is QV cross B. QV is delta X over delta T cross B. Delta X is that belt vector. Where's my delta X? Here's my delta X. T is not a vector, so I can actually push this over. And this turns into Q over delta T times delta X, the vector cross B. Oh, wait, you know what Q over T is. That's current. Delta X is this piece here. This is the length of wire in the field. That's L, which is a vector. And then B stays the same. force on a wire, ILB. And then, nice. There it is, right there. I can't quite see, my ILB, Woo. 